Hello everybody, my name's Liz and I'm the Baker That Sews. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're a subscriber. So if you are already a subscriber, you will notice um, one change, which is my hair. So I went and got my hair cut this morning. Um, I do always do this when I go and get my hair cut. I always go with an idea of what I want my hair to be like. I'm not very adventurous with my hair. Um, you know, I get it dyed red and I tend to have sort of hair about here. Um, yeah, and they've cut it a little bit shorter than I would normally have liked. Normally I like a couple, couple more centimetres, just so it sits sort of here. Um, but yeah, my husband said he likes it, and my girls have said they like it, but I don't know whether they're just saying that to make me feel better. But anyway, it will grow. Um, and I'm sure in a week's time I will absolutely love it, and I think it's like the perfect length for me. So yes, I had my hair cut. It was a wonderful experience, first time back. Um, normally I go and get my hair cut in the Easter holidays, which will have been April this year, but obviously because of lockdown it was shut, so my hair was quite long. So about here, and it was doing that really annoying thing where it sticks out because it sits on your shoulders. So it was such a luxury being able to go and get my hair cut. So anyway, today's video, I thought, it's a little bit different actually, but I thought as soon as I go on about this pattern so much, I thought I would explain why I absolutely love the Deer and Doe My Sotis dress and I've pulled out all the different versions that I've made. I'm wearing my latest version made in this amazing floral cotton poplin from Crafty Sew and This Sew. was given to me in return for a blog post. I could choose the fabric, I could pick what I wanted to make with it um, and I will link their blog down below so if you haven't had a chance to read it yet you can go and find out what I did to the pattern. Um, but it was an absolute dream to sew. It's a pattern that I know like the back of my hand um, and like I said I got all of my versions out of my wardrobe and I've actually made this pattern eight times um, in lots of different um, styles. Um, so I thought I'd talk through why I absolutely love it. So I've got the pattern in front of me. The front pattern piece is so well loved because I absolutely adore this pattern. So I'll start from the beginning and then hopefully I'll remember to fit everything in and then I'll share some of the variations and I'll put better pictures in as I go along as well. And I'll put better pictures in of this one. Um, so it's by Deer and Doe, and it, it come, the pattern comes in two main variations, which I'll show you in a moment, and I'll also explain what the sizes are. So you can either do this version with a shorter skirt and the ruffle, and then the ruffle on the sleeves, or you can just do this version, which is just a gathered skirt, and it sort of falls about your knee, towards to where your knee is. It's got this lovely mandarin collar and then button down placket. And then I've got the line drawings here to show you. So I tend to do this version. But my last few myositises, I've done the um, hack for the collar, which is what I've done on this one. And Marie from Stitch Odyssey shared an Instagram TV hack where you draft a facing instead of having the collar. So I don't have the mandarin collar, instead I've got a facing here. And I much prefer that look. But I do have some variations with the mandarin collar. It comes in sizes, so they're, um, it's a French pattern company, and they come in size, it comes in sizes 34 all the way up to a 52, so quite a range. Um, and then in terms of measurements um, and what that means, it comes in a 31 and a half bust, so that's the smallest, all the way up to a 45 and 5 eighths of an inch bust for the, the largest size. And then waist measurements from the smallest size, it's 23 and a half inches, all the way up to 37 and three quarter inches. Um, and then the hip measurement, the smallest size, is 33 and three quarter inches, all the way up to 48 inches. So quite a range. And then it also gives you, which is always really handy, the finished garment measurements too. So there's quite, I mean, it's meant to be quite a loose fitted garment anyway. So there are a couple of inches on top for the finished garment. There's quite a lot of ease basically is what I'm trying to say. I don't know if that made any sense what I was saying. For example, I normally do a 30, a size 38 because my bust is 34. My waist is 27 inch and my hips are 35. Um, so I kind of sit between a 36 and a 38. But because there's a lot of ease, it doesn't matter. Um, because the finished garment measurements for the bust is 39 and 3 quarter inches so I do have quite a lot of room here which I quite like um, I don't know about you but my bust fluctuates throughout the month um, and then the waist finished measurements 31 and 1 8 inches so quite a lot of ease around the waist and then the same for the hips 
the um, finished garment measurement for the hips because it's a gathered skirt is 66 and 1 8 inches. I hope that makes sense. So a huge size range, um, quite a lot of ease, quite loose fitting, which is one of the reasons why I absolutely love the Deer and Joe Myosotis. It can also be made in a range of fabrics and dependent on the fabric you get a completely different look and that will be evident when I show you the garments that I've made. So the recommended, I've just got it here just so I don't miss any fabric recommendations off, but the recommended fabrics, Sean Bray, Rayon Twill, Batiste, Double Gauze, Lightweight Cotton Sateen, um, and it doesn't mention cotton, doesn't mention cotton poplin, but I, that's what the main fabric is that I've used. I've got one in a viscose and then the rest is a cotton, varying in lightweight cotton to a heavy to medium weight cotton. Um, and I prefer cotton, I find it's quite breathable, it feels nice on my skin and you can get quite a lot of different looks from a cotton fabric. Um, in terms of fabric amount that you need to make, there's two, like I said, there's two versions. So you can make version A, and for version A, you need three and a quarter yards if it's 60 inch wide fabric. And then if it's a 45 inch wide fabric, you need three and seven eighths of a yard. So I've just converted that because I have no idea about yards. And it's just under three meters to just over three meters. And then if you want to make version B, then you need just slightly less, you need about two and a half meters of fabric, but that's the 60 inch wide. So two and, I've got it here, two and three quarter yards for the 60 inch wide fabric, and then three yards for the 45 inch fabric. And three yards is 2.7 meters. Um, just to say, all of the variations that I have made, I have used two and a half meters of fabric for all of them. Um, and they vary in sizes, so I've never had to need, I've never needed three meters. The wider the fabric, the easier it is to fit the patterns on, but I would definitely say play around with the pattern pieces if you've got a smaller amount of fabric than is recommended. But I've never needed more than two and a half, um, and I've managed to get the patterns on no bother. Um, and like I said, with the white and blue, with my white and blue version, I have um, sort of played around with my scraps to try and make the ruffle and it still looks fine. I think it still looks really nice. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say how much fabric you need. So I first came across this pattern probably about a year and a half ago. It was all over Instagram. There was lots of amazing different versions. And then I cut one out using this um, really lightweight um, black and white and gray checked fabric. Now I can't remember where I got this from. But it's really quite lightweight not much drape to it but in terms of the feel of the fabric it's not heavy at all it feels really lightweight um, and I cut it out um, gosh I'm think I said a year and a half ago but it might be longer than a year and a half ago I think it might be two years ago because I had this version cut out for months and months and months I've no idea why um, yeah I think it was about two years ago not last summer, the summer before I cut it out. So I had it all cut out, ready to go, and then it just sat in my work in progress pile, um, feeling quite sad, quite sorry for itself, and I've no idea why. I don't know whether it was because it's got buttonholes and it's got gathers, so I don't know whether that was just putting me off completely. But once I got, got started with the pattern, it came together so easily. Um, and that's another reason why I love this pattern so much. The instructions are written brilliantly. Um, I found it really easy to assemble the PDF. That wasn't a problem. And it shows you the layout of how your pattern pieces go together, which is handy. Um, and then you've also got the cutting layout for either a 60 inch wide fabric or a 45 inch wide fabric. There we go. So that's useful. Um, and then, yeah, the line drawings for the different variations and then the standard 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance it tells you that they're already included in the pattern and then the instructions I like they're really they're laid out really well there's clear pictures that go with it which is fantastic and it's really obvious what you've got to do so it's quite obvious when it's uh, fabric the right side out or fabric wrong side out I like that that's really clear because it's not always clear in other patterns um, that I've followed and there's a review coming of another pattern that 
um, I've been making that it really wasn't clear and actually if I hadn't had sewing experience I would have found it quite difficult. So I made my first version when I'd first started out sewing. I'd only been sewing for about a year. So to have really clear instructions like that, really, really helpful. It made sewing it such a breeze. And then it also breaks it down into different steps. So the first step I was just showing you um, is the, the bodice. Oh, another thing to say is, I like this, you've got a before you begin page, which gives you six steps um, to help the construction of your garment go as smoothly as possible. Things like reminding you to wash and dry your fabric um, at the same temperature that you will then wash your garment when it's been made. Uh, making sure that you've got everything, so checking the supply list um, in the pattern, making sure that you've measured yourself correctly, um, and then also a top, there's a top tip in here for if your measurements fall between two, what you should do. Ironing your fabric and folding it, and then tracing, marking all the notches, folds, darts, etc. So I just like that. Gives you lots of top tips even before you begin, which is great. And then, as I was saying, um, it breaks it down into different steps. So you've done step one, which is you've started to do your bodice, you've done your bust darts and your waist darts, and then step two is the sleeves. And I like that because if you want to tackle this, say, over a week or two weeks, you can break it down really easily into chunks. So I could do the bodice and the collar prep. Yeah, and you do actually add the collar. Leave it and then come back to it knowing that I've got another complete step to follow and I'm not midway through something. So I really like that it breaks it down into those steps. Um, and it continues to do that throughout the pattern. So then you've got step three, which is the skirt construction. Um, and then there's also options for like version A and version B. Um, I mean, I love this pattern. I've made it so many times. I find the instructions, there's not a huge amount of instructions, but it's clear enough to break it down throughout each step. I wasn't ever left thinking, hang on, I don't understand that. Or, you know, I didn't feel like I had to go and have a look for somebody else's blog where they've made it. So instructions really great. Size range is really great. Um, in my opinion, you can make it in lots of different fabrics and you get lots of different looks. Um, so when I shared this one, I had a couple of people message saying I, could, I, I wouldn't even have thought to use cotton poplin. But I find cotton poplin works really well and it gives a different look to the dress. So um, I will insert pictures of me wearing this, but I'll stand up as well just to show you. So I really like the shape that you get from the poplin. You know, you can see the gathers. Um, it holds its shape really nicely. I like the way that the frill is. And then um, we've got pockets, which is nice. The other thing about this pattern, actually, is the pocket piece is quite big. I like a pattern that comes with a big pocket. So I find it's really great. It's got the button placket, so if you need, um, I don't know, you know, if you're breastfeeding or anything like that, it's really great. Also, if it's a hot day, I can put a little vest top underneath and then have my buttons open slightly. Um, it's got a lot of room. So I have spoken about this before on my channel, but I suffer from IBS. And that means that sometimes I'll eat something and it will really impact my stomach and I'll bloat quite massively. Um, I find throughout the day my stomach size changes anyway, my waist size changes. Um, again, mainly through bloating, but sometimes I might have eaten something that doesn't necessarily agree with me. I do have to be really careful about what I eat. So um, bread is not a good thing for me to eat, but sometimes I can't resist eating some bread and then I have to suffer the consequences. Um, so anyway, I'm waffling about lots of other things that aren't to do with the myositis, but that is one reason why I absolutely love this pattern because it's easy to fit, but it's also really comfortable to wear because of that ease around the waist and the hip area and actually around the bodice area. Um, I don't have to worry about um, my body changing and then not having a dress to fit, um, which is really nice actually. So I really like that it's got a lot of ease around. But one thing I do tend to do, and I've done to quite a lot of my Dear and Do My Sotis dresses, is I add a waist tie. So um, I usually keep make it quite long, and I just stitch them into the side seam here and here. And it just means that, you know, all of this, which is quite nice when it's a hot day, uh, if I want to pull it in, I can use the waist ties to pull it in, just like that. And then I also get this lovely little bow detail here. Or what I can do is not have it tied at the front, don't wrap it around, 
and then just loosely try tie it at the back and then it's just another little feature on the dress so this is one version that I've made like I said this is the most recent version that I've made this one was my first version and what I did with this one is it's got the mandarin collar I used snaps so snaps work really well on this pattern as well actually um, it's got the ruffle on the sleeve but it Oh, and then what I decided to do, actually, I'm having to remind myself because I made this so long ago, is I did the shorter skirt. I'm not going to be able to find the pattern. That, oh, here we go. So what I did on this one was I did the shorter skirt and then the ruffle. So it's actually not too dissimilar to the skirt length here. And I'll just hold it up so you can see. So the skirt's quite short and then we've got the ruffle on the bottom. And I'll put pictures in of me wearing this. Um, this one I absolutely adore. It looks really great, not only for the summer, but also for the winter. This one goes really nicely with tights. I think they'd all go really nicely with tights, actually. And this pattern has got quite a lot of darts, which I quite like because it gives the shape around the front and around the back. So it's got waist darts here. It might be better to show you on the line drawings in a second, actually. And then you've got bust darts going across here. And then you've got really deep darts in the back just here so I'll just show you on the line drawing so that you can see a bit clearer so you've got darts here and then you've got darts here and then you've got two darts in the back so just put it forward so you can see uh, and then the skirt length I didn't talk about this but for the size I make it says the skirt length which I thought was quite a handy measurement to have it's 20 and 1 8 of an inch uh, from your waist all the way down. What I also tend to do is um, I lengthen the bodice because the bodice does tend to sit here and I prefer it to sit on my natural waist so I always add between one and two inches um, just to the bodice just so it sits more on my natural waist but it is meant to sit just slightly above. So that's the first version and then I've made some photos of actually um, but again it's in a cotton I think it's just a quilting cotton actually, it's quite quite weighty uh, with this beautiful dragonfly detail. Let me turn it around so you can see. It's sort of a duck egg blue I guess, with these pops of colour from the yellow dragonflies. And again this one, I added the collar, I added the ruffle and I've added very long waist ties but I kept the skirt plain so it hasn't got the ruffle at the bottom. Um, and then I also added these really colourful snaps, just hold it up so you can see, just prim snaps to really make this yellow, where is it, <laughs> I'm holding it on the inside, to make this yellow from the dragonfly really pop. And again, because it's in a quilting cotton, it holds its shape really well, and I quite like that. So that's version number three, because I've got this one, um, the gingham, the black gingham, um, and then that one in a quilting cotton. And then I've got this one, which again is in a cotton poplin, poplin, I think I'm saying that correctly. And this, I love this, it reminds me of fruit salad sweets. Um, and this fabric's from Semi Sunshine. So what I did for this version, again if I get the line drawing to show you, is I did the long skirt and then added the ruffle. So it changes the length of the dress, which I absolutely love. I did keep, yeah, I kept the collar and then I've got the buttons. And again, I use those bright yellow snaps, prim snaps, which I absolutely love. Um, it's got the ruffle on the sleeve and it's got the ruffle on the skirt. And then again, this version, I added waist ties and I lengthened the bodice. Um, and I'll put pictures in of me wearing this one because it's quite difficult to hold up. But yeah, this one reminds me of, um, you know, the sweeties fruit salads. I love those sweets. So it reminds me of those because it's those sorts of colors. So I love wearing that version. Um, very bright, very colourful, very me. Then, sticking with the colourful theme, um, I made a striped version where I played around with the stripes. Oh, I've just remembered actually, I've got another version. So I've actually made nine Dear and Dear My Sotuses. I haven't dug this one out. I'll stop the video soon and I'll go and dig it out. This one is in this gorgeous striped fabric from Flip Flop Fabrics Shop. That's a bit of a mouthful. Again, I've used um, prim snaps because I just loved this colour 
and um, I found it tricky to match buttons so I wasn't sure what colour to go with this sort of um, rainbow I guess fabric just quickly close those my usual adjustments with this one I lengthened the bodice it's got waist ties of course it's got pockets and it's got the frill at the bottom and the frill on the sleeves but what I did do with this one is I played around with the stripes so I've got the stripes going across and the stripes going down and then on the ruffle it's got the stripes going across again um, and I shared this on Instagram and said actually because of the fabric the type of fabric that it is with the lines I didn't pattern match uh, because I only had a certain amount of this so you can see that although the stripes match up they're not the right colors they're not the same colors and I wondered whether it would bother other people um, but the general consensus was nobody else would notice it's just me. Um, I don't know if I'm the only one that does that, but when you make something as a sewist, I think you tend to notice all the faults that other people just would not notice at all. So actually, I really enjoy wearing this one. It's really fun. Okay, I'm back. I found the other one in my wardrobe. I can't believe I forgot about this one because this is also one of my favorites. Anyway, the next one I want to talk about is made in a cotton lawn. Now, a cotton lawn is sort of medium weight, but it's got quite a silky texture because it's got a higher thread count. Um, so it's lightweight, can be transparent. And this one, this version isn't transparent, um, but it's really good for dresses. So I've used the cotton lawn. It's called Fashion Focused Cotton Lawn, and it's in this amazing fabric. And I absolutely love this one. Um, this one's a slightly shorter version, just because I did the short, oh no, I didn't do the short skirt. I did this short, uh, I didn't do the short skirt. Let me start again. Um, I did this version with this skirt, no ruffle, but I did do the ruffle on the sleeves. So another reason why I love this pattern is because you can mix and match and change it up. It has quite a lot of potential. Um, so I love this one. And again, I use snaps on this one. Um, yeah, I found it difficult again with this one to try and choose what colour buttons. So the other one that I'd forgotten about is this one, which again is in a quilting cotton. And I had this in my stash for ages and just didn't know what to use it for but then settled on a myosotis and again I've played around with the print on this so I've had the stripes going lots of different ways and I really love this version and the other great thing about this version is I can match it with different coloured shoes because I've got loads of jelly shoes which I love wearing so um, I've got stripes going across on the bodice and then down on the skirt and then across with the and I've talked about this one in one of my makes videos because it's a zero waist dress because what I did for the frill is I pieced together you can probably see the lines I pieced together all the little scraps so that I could create the frill on the bottom so I'm really I was gonna beg a joke then I'm thrilled with this dress because of that sorry about that awful joke um, added waist ties uh, again usual extension of the bodice um, and again, that's one of my favourite dresses to wear in the summertime. Then I've got two more left to talk to you about. So one is in a really lightweight cotton gingham, which I can't remember where I got this from. I think I got it from Fabrics Galore, actually. Um, I'll try and link it down below because I know they've still got some left. Um, but I made this when schools reopened after lockdown. It was the summer term that we were going back. And I just there's something nostalgic about wearing a summer gingham dress when you were at school. I don't know if you had a gingham dress when you were at school, but um, I saw this fabric and it's in the same color as the uniform that my girls wear when they go to school. So they went to school, well Ruby didn't go to school in her, her gingham dress because she doesn't like wearing dresses, but Lola did and I wanted to match. So I made myself a gingham summer dress to wear on the first day back after lockdown. Um, this one, I did the hack where I did a facing. So instead of the collar, it hasn't got the collar, it's got a facing. Again, I use snaps. I do use my buttonhole um, on my machine, but for some reason a lot of my dresses, especially this one, they've got the snaps. I think it's because it's quite a narrow placket. So the way that you stitch it, I think you can stitch it wider if you want to. Um, but yeah, I think maybe that's why I opt for snaps and they're much quicker to do. And I've already said, I think this has got the waist tie as well. And I went for all the frills on this one. So it's got the frills on the sleeve and then it's got the skirt ruffle at the bottom. And it's a lightweight cotton, so it feels really nice to wear and it moves really nicely as well, actually. It was an absolute dream to sew, sew with. 
And then the last one I've got, it's a bit crumpled because it's just been hung up in my wardrobe. Um, and this is made out of a viscose that I got from Material Girl Laura. And it's a lemon, striped lemon viscose. And this was an absolute dream to sew with as well, actually. This one, again, I've used snaps. I've used navy snaps to match the stripe. And I've had the stripes going all the same way for this one. This has got the ruffle on the sleeve. Oh, apart from the sleeves, actually, I played around with the stripe on the sleeves. And then it's got the ruffle hem. Um, all of the myositis that I've made have got pockets because in my op opinion pockets are essential um, and I'll just stand up so you can see this one but it's very creased and I will put pictures in um, so I love this version I love how this viscose moves it's really drapey which is lovely um, so that is my collection of Dear and Do Myositis and some of the reasons why I absolutely love it it's easy to sew up um, the only tricky part is the collar, but if you do the hack to omit the collar, to just draft your facing, then it's really easy to do. I'll link uh, Marie's Instagram TV tutorial so that you can see how to do that, but it's quite straightforward. You basically trace this part of your pattern piece and round the neckline to create your um, facing. So quite a simple hack, but really effective in my opinion. Um, buttonholes are the next trickiest part, and then there's lots and lots of gathers. But if you take your time, I don't see why you can't give this a go as a beginner, as long as you've sewn a couple of simple things. Because the steps honestly just hold your hand throughout the entire thing. And because you can make it in something like a cotton poplin, which is quite a stable fabric to sew with, it sews really quickly, it presses really nicely. Um, yeah, I cannot speak more highly of this pattern, and I definitely see a lot more in my wardrobe in the future so I hope you found that interesting um, that my next video what I'm planning to do is talk through some of the fabrics that I've got in my stash and what the fabric quality is like and how the fabrics move and sort of matching that up to some patterns that I've got in my stash um, I know a lot of people have asked me already um, when I've sort of said what vlogs would you like to see lots of people have said um, maybe some more information about fabrics now I'm not an expert but I can only talk about my own experiences sewing with different fabrics and what those fabrics feel like and move like and sort of pattern matching in that sense um, but I'm planning to get that filmed next week because it's now the summer holidays so I've got a bit of time during the day to film some more vlogs and just do a bit more research with that so hopefully that will be coming next weekend um, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, it would be amazing if you could subscribe. I'm creeping ever so slowly towards 2,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Um, but if you subscribe and click on the bell, then you'll get notifications of when I bring up my next video. And then before I go, um, let me know if there's a pattern that you absolutely love. I mean, I talk about the my Dear and Doe Myositis all the time. I must make one once a month, once every couple of months, because I absolutely love it or I use aspects of the Dear and Doe Mysotis and hack them with other patterns because I just absolutely adore it. Um, I think it's a pattern that fits me, I think it's a pattern that suits me really well as well and it's my style which I think is really important to me and I've found that with sewing. I think it's important that I stick to things that I know are going to suit me and I'm going to want to wear. Cause I but I've sometimes perhaps made, made something that's not necessarily my style and I know deep down I probably know it's not going to suit me or I'm not it's not going to be something that I reach for basically which is really important for me I think if I make something I invest that time I use that beautiful fabric I want to be able to reach for it time and time again and that is what I'm really focusing on at the moment so um, as much as I love all these new patterns that are coming out I'm really thinking carefully can I see that in my wardrobe is it something that I'm going to reach for time and time again and if it isn't then I'm not buying that new pattern I'm not getting distracted by that new pattern um, but still that was a bit of a waffle for the end of the video um, let me know down below what is your go-to pattern and why do you love it um, because it's always great to find out what other people love take care enjoy whatever you're up to and I'll be back soon with another video bye